All right, time now for hot picks. Today, we are looking for them in the biotech sector. We've got Laura Chico, Senior Vice President of Biotechnology Equity Research at Wedbush. Laura, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, before we jump into your picks, I'd just love to know what you're screening for, what you think the market dynamics are right now that are going to lead to outperformance. Sure. Well, thanks, Amber, for having me today. Um, in terms of the sector overall, I think a few things to look for. Um, the large cap uh, biotech sector has shown some phenomenal revenue growth through a difficult time. I think, you know, in terms of the SMID cap space, we're really looking for advancement of pipelines, and that translates to news flow and then also FDA approvals. And I think this is actually a great year. We're starting to see an increasing amount of readouts that are later stage. So I think that can help to invigorate interest in the space overall. Let's talk about one of those, because you talked about this rally, and it's interesting you're picking a laggard here, Neurocrine Biosciences. What do you like about it? Why is it lag, do you think? Sure, and just stepping back, this is a $10 billion biotech. Their flagship program is Ingreza, which is on the market, doing over a billion dollars a year, approved for tardive dyskinesia, which is a movement disorder. Earlier this month, they did announce a collaborative deal with another biotech company, Voyager Therapeutics. This was acquiring certain rights to an early stage gene therapy targeting Parkinson's disease. I think the market was actually looking for them to potentially bring on a bolt-on acquisition, uh, something a little bit more advanced stage in development. Um, but that does not take anything away from the commercial progress that Ingreza has made. And pretty soon on the 5th, the 5th of February, we should be getting a look at fourth quarter results for Neurocrine and also forward guidance for 2023. So as you mentioned, the stock has pulled back a little bit here, but I think that is a near-term event to be watching for, for Neurocrine investors. And it's interesting because you also like their competitor, Karuna. Yeah, so Karuna is an interesting one. This is a $6.5 billion biotech, also in the CNS or neurology space. Karuna's lead program is known as CAR-XT, which is actually a combination of two agents, and they are targeting the schizophrenia space. So we've seen some really exciting data from CAR-XT thus far in two registrational trials. We have a third trial reading out this quarter, but they should be in position to file for approval by the middle of this year, which could set up a commercial launch in 2024. I think what's most exciting about this, there's been really limited innovation in schizophrenia specifically. This is a new mechanism of action, and the profile we are seeing to date is really differentiated compared to antipsychotics that are on the market right now. Are these either of these uh, potential takeover targets for some of the big pharma, and, and do you factor that in when you're looking at, at some of the stocks that you like? Yeah, you know, there's certainly been a, a number of, um, I guess, speculation for both Neurocrine and Karuna in terms of potentially being acquisition targets. Um, I, I think that's kind of impossible to ignore in this space. Um, I, I guess what I would say is, you know, Neurocrine has certainly been an active participant in seeking external assets, and I, I don't anticipate that to slow down. The CFO has commented that they still have capacity to do 3 to $4 billion in deals. Hmm. Whether they become a target or not, I think that still remains to be seen. But I do think Ingreza is just hitting its stride. There were some complexities during the COVID pandemic that really um, created difficulty in getting to patients. But I think they have made the right investments in SG&A. And right now, the stock is trading at about six times consensus earnings for 2023. The large cap peer group is trading closer to eight times revenue. So I do think there's an opportunity here if Ingresa continues to perform. And then we get some pipeline contributions that certainly makes it more attractive. And then as it relates to Karuna, yeah, I think this is one reason why the stock has pulled back. I think there was um, thoughts that after the recent phase three data, they would be an acquisition target. I certainly don't think that goes away at all. I know there's been some discussion recently and a letter sent by Senator Elizabeth Warren to the FTC about one pending biotech acquisition. But specific to the schizophrenia space, this is an area where we have a lot of existing molecules. So I don't think that's necessarily a concern that's directly applicable to somebody like Karuna. Let's talk Edgewise Therapeutics. It's a smaller cap, only $600 million, um, and mm -hmm. it's developing uh, drugs as well. Um, 
And, and uh, you know, as you talk about it, I also want to talk about whether you need to be prepared for more volatility uh, in these smaller companies that are maybe a little bit more nascent in their pipeline. Yeah, that, that, that's a great question. And I think specific, well, maybe stepping back first, in the SMID cap space, you know, cash is king. And obviously, these companies are consumers of capital as they're advancing therapies. I would say that Edgewise does have a good balance sheet position in terms of their ability to extend cash runway right now. Um, but that is a concern across this mid cap space in general, um, particularly as as we progress here through the year. Um, I would say the companies that are probably going to fare most or fare best rather are, are those that do have data readouts approaching and can have access to the capital markets that way. Alternative mechanisms of financing through debt or collaborative deals are still opportunities for all the companies. Um, but drilling back to Edgewise and, and why we think this is an interesting play here, they have a unique uh, technology that's targeting a specific protein and muscle called myosin. And while their lead efforts have focused on cardiac muscle indications like Duchenne muscular dystrophy, they recently announced um, a second program that they're advancing towards the clinic this year targeting cardiac muscle. So I think this is a really interesting play. I do think the Duchenne muscular dystrophy space in general is going to be pretty exciting this year. We have some other potential competitive updates. And one of the things we like about Edgewise is that their therapy could be very complementary, sure. even if some of these other programs advance. 